Welcome to Incredible, where we discover the weird and wonderful in this world. Vince McMahon is the undisputed king of pro wrestling, with a billion dollar empire at his disposal, 1.6 billion for those of you keeping track. However, what's the story behind the trailer park kid who became a billionaire? A hard scrabble life. Vince McMahon was born into wrestling royalty, but you'd never known it looking at his early life. McMahon's father Vincent J. McMahon was a second generation promoter who divorced his son's mother, leaving Vince to group up in a trailer park. While Vince would spend summers with his father, interacting with the many colourful characters who wrestled for his dad, he had a tough childhood, finding himself in frequent fights and brushes with the law that eventually led him to being sent to military school. The teenage Vince would learn valuable lessons from the future during the summers with his father, as the young man admired their larger-than-life personas and saw how people gravitated towards them, a lesson he would save for the future if he could somehow break into wrestling as his dad and grandfather had done. At the time though, there was no guarantee of him taking over the family business. Breaking into the business Vince found himself in what he saw as one boring job after another, including selling paper cups and adding machines, as well as working in a factory. His goal was to work in his father's wrestling promotion, but that was beginning to look more and more unlikely. However, when the aspiring wrestling businessman caught a break, he seized it immediately. He broke into wrestling by becoming an announcer after his father's longtime announcer Ray Morgan requested a pay increase. The younger McMahon began watching the world of wrestling and how it operated, learning from one of the industry's best, his father. Repeated failures, repeated lessons. While his father successfully promoted the WWWF, as the WWE was called during the 60s and 70s, Vince sought to become a successful business person in his own right. In some respects, Vince was a visionary and saw the future of how entertainers could transcend the traditional limitations of entertainment at the time, the size of a venue where a show was being held. For example, no matter how hot an act was, a promoter was limited to an arena size whether it had 20,000 seats or 50,000. However, the growing technology known as closed-circuit television allowed an event to be held in one location and broadcast to many other locations, with people paying to watch it on a screen. When Evil Knievel announced he was going to jump Snake River Canyon in a rocket sled, McMahon saw the stunt as a must-see event that people would pay to watch, even if they couldn't see it in person. Later, McMahon attempted a second go, this time with the much-hyped boxer versus wrestler match between Muhammad Ali and Antonio Inoki that took place in Japan, but which was broadcast on closed-circuit television at New Jersey's Shea Stadium. However, both events failed, costing McMahon money and leading to him and his wife filing for bankruptcy. While the younger McMahon had the right vision, the time for his vision wasn't right. McMahon continued and undeterred, he pursued other ventures alongside his wife Linda. But despite failures, they would learn from each mistake. His biggest gamble. Despite past failures, Vince McMahon was ready to roll the dice again. McMahon saw that the wrestling industry was changing and he was ready to strike before others did. The expansion of cable television meant that fans from throughout the country could watch one promotion show on one channel. This was already happening with Georgia Championship Wrestling, which aired on Ted Turner's superstation WTBS. McMahon knew the days of promoters running shows in one geographic area was about to change and that his father's WWF could promote shows outside the Northeast as it traditionally had, if Vince made the right moves. Vince offered to buy the WWF from his father, an offer that was accepted, but with a major provision. Vince would have to make each payment, and if he failed to do so, the company would go back to his father along with every penny the would-be promoter had already paid. Vince agreed to his father's terms and raised the money, becoming the owner of the WWF. Vince McMahon's vision of wrestling depended on him launching a national promotion, something other promoters had toy with but who had yet to make it successful. McMahon's goal depended on him finding a highly marketable star and an entertaining cast of supporting characters. The promoter raided a number of rival promotions, cherry-picking their best wrestlers, announcers and other staff. Spearheading the new version of the WWF was the extremely charismatic Hulk Hogan, a larger-than-life wrestler who personified everything that Vince wanted in his company, clearly defined heroes and villains playing in storylines that focused on flash over substance. Key to Vince's vision was a giant event to capitalize on his investments and planning. That event became known as WrestleMania. The show would feature pop singer Cindy Lauper and TV and film star Mr. T, who wrestled alongside Hulk Hogan in the main event. Success leads to more success. 
Vince's WrestleMania gamble paid off, and the WWF's popularity led to an unprecedented number of crossover ventures, including a network television special, home video releases of WWF events, expanding on merchandise deals, including action figures, food products, and even music albums. As the WWF's popularity soared, it crushed many of the other promotions in wrestling until the only major rival was World Championship Wrestling, a distant second to the WWF. The WWF stumbles. Although they enjoyed smashing success with Hulk Hogan leading the way, Vince McMahon feared, and rightly so, that the fans would eventually tire of Hogan. However, McMahon's attempts to replace Hogan with a new champion failed as Hogan's would-be successor The Ultimate Warrior, while popular, did not match the Hulkster's success. Even Hogan himself was wearing out his welcome with the fans, and the WWF's problems continued as it faced declining business, a steroid scandal that could harm the company, and the loss of major stars. At one point, Vince McMahon himself was put on trial for allegedly distributing steroids, but it would prevail in court. The WWF then began promoting younger stars in the move marketed as the new generation. But this couldn't recreate the heyday of the Hogan era. McMahon's problems only worsened when rival WCW's new executive Eric Bischoff convinced WCW owner Ted Turner to become more competitive. WCW launched a rival show to the WWF's flagship show, Monday Night Raw, and began an aggressive campaign of signing the WWF's top performers. While the initial Monday Night War as they became were close battles, WCW's acquisition of key WWF players and the extremely popular storyline The New World Order propelled WCW to the top. WCW continued growing while the WWF seemed to be withering away. The Competitive Edge WCW's competition hit the WWE hard, but it also woke up the proverbial sleeping giant. McMahon had always thrived on competition, and WCW's threat to his company led him to stepping outside of his comfort zone in terms of how he portrayed his wrestlers. The new generation transformed into the edgy attitude era, which saw adult storylines that often caused trouble with TV censors, but which delivered ratings. In one of the wrestling industry's biggest twists, Vince McMahon went from announcing matches to becoming an on-screen character. Vince's Mr. McMahon character proved to be the perfect villain for his promotion's top star, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and business only increased, making McMahon a billionaire. Going Corporate Vince McMahon had not only brought the WWF back from the brink of defeat, he was ready to take it to greater heights. In 1999, the WWF became a publicly traded company, selling stock that gave it the capital to grow even further. Since then, McMahon has expanded the WWE with its own streaming service, the WWE Network, its own film production company, WWE Studios, its own series of books, and more. At age 75, Vince McMahon continues to maintain a very hands-on approach to running his company, and he's always eager to find new ways to increase revenue based off his core business, sports entertainment. Not every venture has succeeded though, including two attempts at running the XFL, a professional football league, but McMahon does not seem to know the word quit. Here to stay? Despite drops in ratings and audience attendance numbers, the WWE remains a corporate giant, not only in the wrestling world, but in the entertainment world, with the company valued at over $5 billion. They've established a global market and continue establishing new international ventures, whether it's the company's recent 10-year deal with Saudi Arabia or its expansion into India. Forbes noted the WWE's programs are broadcast in roughly 150 countries and more than 30 languages. And according to WWE's corporate site, the company's programming reaches more than 800 million homes worldwide in 28 languages. The company is headquartered in Stamford, Connecticut, with offices in New York, Los Angeles, London, Mexico City, Mumbai, Shanghai, Singapore, Dubai, Munich, and Tokyo. While there's no guarantees of continued success, they have many things going for it that make it likely it's not going away anytime soon. The company has a solid corporate infrastructure, is still seen as the place to work by many wrestlers, it has a developmental system that recruits and trains some of the world's best as well as the stars of tomorrow, and the company has a large cash reserve to draw upon in times of trouble. While no business is immune from failure, Vince McMahon has built his empire into a powerhouse that has thrived through ups and downs and is likely to reach new heights. Pretty amazing from a kid who grew up in a trailer park and became a billionaire. But there you have it guys, from rags to riches, Vince McMahon. Be sure to subscribe and leave your comments down below, and I'll see you next time with some more incredible videos.